Hey everyone, thanks for checking back into the channel. Today we're gonna be diving into the affordable Lyton X3 Tactics 1 to 8 by 24 LPVO optic. So let's get at it. You know, before I dive too much into this scope, let's talk a bit about why these scopes are so popular. And it has to do with this modern sporting rifle or this AR platform that I have behind me. These rifles have become a lot more affordable, a lot more popular, and a lot more people's hands. A lot of people are having fun going to the ranges, doing some of the tactical type shootings, the different triple gun type shooting competitions and whatnot. So these rifles have become a lot more popular and a lot more common bringing to light the LPVO's increased popularity and demand. And that gets us to this affordable Riton Tactics X3 Optic. Now these things MSRP from Riton are just under $500. They're about $479. I did a little bit of searching and I found them on sale. You can get them in the mid 300s to upper $300 range often and you may find a clearance sale with these even under $300. So this is an affordable option to get an LPVO up on your modern sporting rifle, but let's take a look at it and see if it's worth the money. Alrighty, so first thing we're gonna do is a brief unboxing of this optic. Now mind you, I have not even looked at this scope yet. This is my first time having eyes on this as well as you guys, unless you've looked at one. I'm gonna do a quick unboxing and then we're gonna speed along and actually get to the scope because you don't, nobody really cares about the box too much. So let's get at this. First thing I see right on, you use the name Tactics. I'm gonna give a score on this thing a little bit that I generally frown on things when they use the name Tactical in the name. I think it's okay putting Tactical in the description if that's what you're using it for, but when we throw things like Sniper or Tactical in the name, you know, I tend to back away from that stuff a little bit. Maybe this tactics is a play on words, but let's get into this thing and see what we got here. So I gotta figure out how to open this box up here. We're gonna flip it open like this. Looks like we've got a little message from right on in there. Nobody cares about that. I've got an accessory bag. We'll look at that in a minute here. And we've got our scope. So our scope's packed in here relatively simple. I like what I'm seeing here. They've not put a bunch of R&D and money into a box that's overkill that they're passing the buck onto us. So this looks like a pretty sturdy box that's simple uh, and made easy. So I can get this thing out of here. We got a couple pieces of foam. Let's see if he's out of here. We got a sticker. Maybe we'll throw that on the wall. Let's get the box out of our way. So let's take a look at this scope. So first thing looking at it, I see this scope comes with some lens cover flip caps. And these flip caps do appear to be made out of just a rigid, a rigid plastic. I wouldn't call this rubber, <clears throat> just a hard plastic. <clears throat> these are gonna go probably in a trash bin. Uh, looking at this optic, this is a 1 to 8 by 24 second focal plane optic. If you're not aware of what that is, that means as you change the magnifier on this, the reticle does not stay consistent for holdovers. Typically on this kind of a scope, we're going to have to set this thing at the max power of 8 to use the reticle for holdovers versus a first focal plane, you know, like this Arcan Optics EP8. Any magnification you can use the holdovers at any distance and get the same precise holdover uh, ratio. On this, you're going to have to have this thing uh, with it being second focal plane up on 8. You know, some people may ask, you know, why do you want a second focal plane? My eyes are getting worse, and for me, second focal plane can be better because the reticle actually stays thicker, easier to see in some regard. And if you're not doing holdovers, you really don't even need that first focal plane so much unless you want that accuracy of having a thin reticle. But I'm rambling. Let's keep looking at this guy. All right, so our ocular adjustment, I'm sure this has one. Feels Pretty smooth, it's quiet, no grit, no nothing in there. Everybody always checks that out first, right? Uh, how about this magnifier? So we're gonna go from one. Oh, I like what I feel here. It's not too tight. I don't feel any kind of grit, any kind of a pulsing, like as the O-rings in there, sometimes they don't have lubricant on them and you can feel tight spots and looser spots. This actually feels pretty good. Uh, it's got a sticker on it. This is veteran -o, like that. Oh, it will come off. And let's see, let's get to our turret caps. Turret caps are also made of aluminum. Come off nice. 
real nice sharp edges on these turret caps, meaning these things have some good machining going on. But let's check out these turret caps. So these are half MOA adjustments on this optic here. Uh, very, very small numbers on the markings on these turrets. These are really small and there's an extremely small little die for you to line that up. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I hold this thing about like I would on a rifle, it's a little bit hard to see those numbers. Um, as far as the feel, the tech, uh, tactile, you know, feeling the clicks and hearing the clicks, it's not too bad. Uh, it does spin relatively easy, but they do feel like they engage in each click really well. And the same on the elevation turret. Now, right off the rip, what I'm finding with this thing is, boy, I will tell you, it may be hard if you were actually dialing in solutions with this thing. It might actually be hard to get that quickly back on your zero dot. This is really fine stuff here. And I think I got that one on zero. I'm pretty sure I got that one on there. Let's see how these caps go back on. Caps went on nice and smooth here. Caps went on smooth here. Yeah, let's check it out here. So this also has an illuminated reticle on here. So we got our illuminated reticle. Uh, we've got a 1 to 11 for our settings. 11 is extremely bright. I'll show you guys a shoot through of that. Uh, we do not have off settings between each one. Go back to the 1. And when looking through this, you'll notice that the reticle itself is quite thick compared to some of the first focal plane optics. But... This has a strange bit of free play. Can you guys hear that knocking? Bit of a knocking between each of the settings on this. Now it does turn on and off as like it's supposed to do. Um, but aside from that, it, uh, it it's a little bit odd there. Now this optic apparently did come with the battery inside of it because it's on. I'm not too impressed with that feeling there, um, I can move this whole mechanism a little bit. So let's set this aside and see what we got inside this bag here. More garbage. But now it seems like we've got what most optics all come with. We've got a lens cleaning cloth, got this little guy, and what I believe this is is a deal that hooks into the optic to make easier adjustment of your magnification ring. It looks like we've got an Allen wrench to probably set your uh, turrets in here. So let's see how this guy goes on here. Uh, it looks like we've got a simple bladed screw here. I'm going to loosen this up. And I know this is something that Riton says is their little patented way of doing this or something, but I know a lot of optics do the same setup. But, you know, that's it for our accessories. We've got a little magnification knob that goes up in there. Uh, so probably don't want to lose this little cap. We'll throw her in there. Cloth, and that wrench, wherever it went here. All right, well, with all that accessory stuff out of the way, let's finish up taking a quick overview look at this thing. Again, the ocular adjustment's nice and smooth. Um, with this little lever on here, it does allow for an easier movement. It's definitely not too damn tight, but it moves nice and smooth. There's no binding or nothing in there. I like the feel of the magnifier, actually. So this goes from one to eight with no issues. Uh, we do have a good quality threading for these caps. They go on nice and snug. I wouldn't be worried about losing those. Uh, finish is nice on this. Now, this is a 30 millimeter tube. Um, versus some of the more common ones you may see these days with a 34 on them with some of the more high power precision optics. I think 30 is plenty on this optic. Um, battery compartment, I did not open this. Let's see if I can get this open real quick. Battery compartment is on the end, like they all usually are, and it uses your typical CR2032 battery. Uh, this cap uh, does appear to have an O-ring on it, so this should be waterproof. Get this guy to go back on here. All of the machining of this scope seems to be pretty well done as far as that goes. If I can get this cap back on here. These can be a stinker because the battery itself 
has a setup where there is uh, little prongs that push on there. Now this is a little bit difficult getting on. The knurling for the illumination really gets in the way of the knurling for the cap here. You got to kind of hold it still and you can feel it get tight. There's a rubber o-ring in there, but that's on. Um, and again, gosh, I am just not real keen on, on this illuminator. Mm. Aside from that, the finish looks good. Uh, the markings and all that stuff seem all right on it. Let's go look through it. So here we are coming up on our target that I've got set out at 200 yards. You know, you can see the different colors I had on there as well as a spot or bullseye. I really don't have any concerns with the glass. To me, the glass seemed like it worked well on all magnifications as well as even the illumination worked well. So for the money, I think the glass on this optic works really well. So I'm gonna get this target all packed up, get back to the old Ruger Gundog HQ and wrap this review up of this right on optic. All right, all back in from out in the cold and getting some shoot through footage for you guys. So let's summarize this stuff up real quick here. You know, I did not mention at the beginning, this is an optic that I bought with my own money. This was not sent to me. I was not contacted by Riton or anybody else. This is something that I bought with my own money. So this review is as impartial as I can get considering I bought this damn thing. Um, Regarding the shoot-through footage, I always do like to say that keep in mind any of the shoot-through footage that you see from any setup is not going to be as good of a clear representation that you may get with your own eye. I was simply using my cell phone with the scope uh, squeezed up in a death grip tripod to get this footage. But even with a Tacticam or some other shoot-through footage setups, I, in my opinion, don't think that they represent the clarity that you really get with your eye. So with all that said, in review real quick going over this thing so the finish the fit the feel and everything of the optic overall i think is pretty good i think that the machining of the optic is good the only issue that i have regarding anything that has to do with mechanical aspects is this darn illumination knob this stinker has a little bit of a half click kind of a free play I don't know if that is specific to this one that I have. You know, maybe I could send this thing back and get another one and it won't do that. Or if it's a flaw in the design, not sure. Everything else on the scope seems to work mechanically just great and fine. I do think that these caps, again, are garbage. I wouldn't use those things. They seem like they're just some rigid plastic or whatnot. The glass, you know, the glass is quite clear to me. I really didn't have any kind of a haze going around here, any problems with colors or anything like that. You know, if I had to really be picky about the glass, I think on some of the higher magnification, I, I got a little bit of a odd distortion maybe. Uh, it's hard to even explain that, but it's nothing that I would even really be concerned with. That's really just trying to be extremely picky about the glass. So talking about this thing, this optic retails for just under $500. So you're getting a second focal plane, 30 millimeter tube, um, optic with illumination for about 500 bucks. Um, is it a good buy? Is it worth the 500 bucks? You know, the old Ruger gun dog review here. I'm going to say that this scope itself, if you could find it, is it worth the MSRP? In light of what else is out there, I'm going to say no. I think there are better options out there for the same amount of money that offer more features and work just as well. Now, if you can find this optic on sale, um, I think this is an optic that is more like the 250 to $300 package based on what it has to offer. If this illumination thing is an isolated issue, I think it's a good buy for 250 to 300. If this illumination is really indicative of the model or any of these Rikon scopes, I would give it a hard pass. So hey, with all that said, I've got this scope lined up right next to this as a direct comparison to that Arcanoptic EP8. My summary and my review with these optics both being priced in at the same MSRP or really close, 
Would I, uh, you know, elect to take this scope over the EP8? Not a chance. The EP8, I feel, offers far more uh, features, the qualities there and everything. Unless you are really dead set on wanting a second focal plane optic, I don't think that this Tactics uh, X3 one by 24 would really outshine that EP8. So, hey, I hope this helps you out if you're looking at buying one of these Rytons. I'm not going to give this scope a negative review because I am not entirely sure what's up with this illumination. Um, situation it does work but it has what i don't think is a good machine everything else seems pretty good on the scope and what i shoot and hunt and maybe use this thing now well, i bought it I'm gonna give it a try so with all that said you know what i'm gonna say keep on shooting